This is a great test question. The reason why this is a great test question is because it's going to challenge you on factoring. And one thing I know about trig is once we get into trig, students are like, oh, fine, away from like algebra and factoring and all the other stuff. And then guess what? Bam, we come back with some more algebra. So when we're trying to solve a trigonometric equation, typically we're not gonna be doing factoring and stuff like that. But in this problem, that's exactly what we're gonna need to do. A lot of times we can simplify a trigonometric equation by using some identities or inverse operations to simplify it so therefore we can go and solve. But in this example, notice that we have a cosine squared of x and a cosine of x. That's something you wanna look out for. And when you see that, what I want you to do is use substitution. Okay, so sometimes we use u. In this case, I'm just gonna use x because x is the most famous variable that we've used in our algebra. So if I'm gonna say cosine of x is going to be equal to x, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rewrite this equation with x's. All right, so remember that's a cosine squared. That's the same thing as cosine of x, quantity squared, right? So that's why it's an x squared there. And now you can see we have a basic algebra one problem, guys, right? Even though we're doing trig, it's an algebra one, right? I mean, this is a, just a typical solve the quadratic. And the first thing you need to know when solving a quadratic, right, when we have an x squared and an x, is get everything equal to zero. It amazes me as a teacher how many times we'll take like a week or two break and students have already forgot everything they've learned about algebra, polynomials, quadratics, and stuff like that, right? That's the number one step. Now, I know a lot of you want to sometimes default to quadratic formula and stuff like that. Once you learn it, it's like, why do anything else, right? Or type it into chat GPT and just go ahead and solve it. But this really isn't that bad of a problem. Whenever you have a coefficient, you know, especially of like two, three, or four, a lot of times, guys, you can do these rather quickly, faster than it'd be for you to take out your calculator or your phone and try to figure out the answer. Well, if we know we want to factor this and it's gonna give a binomial squared and we're gonna have a two in front here, you can do this in your head two x and x. We know my last two numbers have to add to multiply to give us one. So it's either plus one and plus one or negative one and negative one. Since my middle term is positive, guys, look at this. There's only one answer. Like that was the easiest factor problem ever. But it, you'd be amazed by how many students that are really, really bright, know how to do all this trig, will get stumped on a problem like this. Now again, in this case, we can apply zero product property and we could solve. But at this point, I think we did the hard work with the factoring, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my substitution and I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that. Eh, you know what? Let's go to 2x plus 1 equals 0. x plus 1 is 0. Okay, so now we applied the zero product property. Now let's go back and rewrite this in this factored form from the zero product property. I lied. I don't know why as a teacher I'm like, I want to write this in factored form. I think can anybody that's like that would go back through this and look at it, I want you to go from non-factored form to factored form. Right, so we add the one to the other side and make sure you do that. And now let's go and read the, rewrite these in zero product property. Okay, so now we can just use our inverse operation to solve, right? What would you do over here? Subtract one, divide by two. What would you do over here? Subtract one, divide by two. What about over here? What would you do? Subtract one on both sides. What would you do over here? Subtract one on both sides. Do you see? Do you see how the importance of everything we did in algebra class is now preparing you for applying this with trigonometry? Now, the one thing you didn't learn in your algebra class was to solve these equations using the unit circle. Now remember, when we're, trying to, when we're saying the cosine of x, we're saying the cosine of an angle, which represents the x-coordinate of the coordinate point on the unit circle. And right, hopefully, thankfully, I recognize negative 1 half, and I recognize negative 1. Now, a lot of times we try to find the values on a restriction from like 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and that basically is going to be just the unit circle. So let's go and figure out what are all the solutions where I'm gonna have cosine of x is equal to a negative one half. Now, hopefully you know your unit circle and you know those two angles are going to be a five pi over six and a seven pi over six. And then we look at negative one and that's gonna be up here and that's gonna be your answer, negative pi. Okay, now, if we needed to find all the solutions, right, what I want you to recognize is here's one solution. That is the angle, five pi over six, okay? The next angle, you're gonna have to add two pi to it, and you just keep on adding two pi. So for all of these answers, if I wanted to find all the solutions, all you're gonna do is just say plus two pi n, plus two pi n, plus two pi n. And you can do that for any single angle, any single time you're trying to convert them to all solutions. The one caveat, though, is a lot of times when they have a, when they're only like pi away or something like that, you can sometimes simplify that. So when you always wanna look for a more simplified solution, just add your two pi in. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. And if it was, I know you're gonna enjoy the next video.